Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today I want to talk with you about the auto event tracking functionality within the new version of Google Tag Manager. Now the cool thing about Google Tag Manager as you probably know is that you can not only trigger tags upon the page view but also upon clicks or form submits and that's what we want to talk about today. Before we get started these Little videos are as always brought to you by my Udemy course on Google Tag Manager. If you want to find more out about this, you can go to gtmtraining.com slash YouTube, where I'll also give you a little bit of a discount for this course. But now let's get started on the auto event tracking. Now auto event tracking is basically a trigger. Now the cool thing about Google Tag Manager, as I said before, is that you can nowadays trigger events and tags upon a click, a link click, a form submit, or even history listens, which are these events that happen when you have an Ajax site, or um, you can trigger events upon a JavaScript error. Most common use cases are probably the link click listener or the form submit listener, if you want to track a form submit. And we can easily build them in with Google Tag Manager. Now there has been a change in the latest version of Google Tag Manager. In the old version, these triggers were called rules and you actually had to deploy an auto event listener first before you can pick up these events and then send them over to Google Tag Manager and trigger a rule based on that and also a tag. Now this has been a little bit simplified in the new version. We have an event happening, so for example, a click, a link click, then there will be an auto event listener that picks up this link click and submits some data to the data layer and there will be a data layer event triggered. And then upon that, we can set up a rule, a trigger to accomplish our end action, which would be the deployment of a tag. And these five steps basically were very much simplified with one auto event trigger that you can now deploy through Google Tag Manager and it will encapsulate these three steps that are in this rectangle. So let's take a look how this would be accomplished in a little example. So here we are in our demo shop and I have opened up a contact page here with a contact form that we want to track and see whether somebody clicked on this form submit and trigger a Google Analytics event based on this form submit. Now let's take a look on how we would accomplish that. Let's go over to Google Tag Manager. Now we could of course open up the tag and go through the process. But what I wanna do first is look at how the trigger works. So we'll go actually to triggers and try to configure our new trigger, which would be upon a form submit. So this is a form. And now you can filter down within this panel um, only to have this triggered upon a certain form submit and not all the form submits that may happen on the site. Now, I don't wanna do this for now. I actually wanna go with all forms so we can see what data is transmitted to the data layer. So let's call this trigger form submit. And here we see another filter that you can set, which is whether this auto event listener should be deployed to every page or just to one of the pages. Now we'll take a look at this later. Let's go with not checking validation. Let's just create this trigger for now. And go into our preview and debug mode. Now go back to the site and reload this page. And when I click on this send button and I'll click on it with the command key so it opens up in a new tab, we see that there is a new form submit happening as an event. So let's click on that and we can actually go into the data layer and see what information has been transmitted to the data layer. And that will help us to refine our event listener so it doesn't trigger on all pages and on all form submits. So we have here an element classes or an element ID. Let's go with the element ID, ninja forms form one. 
And let's redefine that in our trigger. So let's go back to Google Tag Manager and open up our form submit and change the filter to only some forms. And here we want to go with the form ID and the form ID should equal ninja forms form one and we continue with that and now we can check for validation so only trigger this event when the callback happened that this um, actually was submitted and we can set a filter to specify when the trigger should listen for form events so basically when should the auto event listener be deployed. So let's say this page URL should contain and let's look at the contact page, page ID 120. So let's go just with 120 here and save this trigger. Now let's try this out again. Reload our demo page. and click on the send button with the command key pressed. We have a form submit. So that is working. We have data lay events in here. And let's set up our tag now to see if our trigger actually happened. So let's go back to Google Tag Manager, go to tags obviously and create a new tag. Now we want to create a event in Google Analytics. So we'll go with Google Analytics as a tag template. We have Universal Analytics installed and we want to go with a form. Now we could go through the process of setting up this trigger again, but we have it right here already saved. So let's open up this and continue. Now we can configure the tag with an appropriate name and paste in here the tracking ID. Now we have all the different features here that we can configure. The important thing is that this track type is actually an event and we'll just make it very generic and say form submit. All right, and we can create this tag. Now let's try this out by going to the preview and debug mode. Reloading our contact page. Let's fill out this form just for test sake. And click on send with the command key pressed. So this triggered an event and upon this event was the event GR form submit submitted. And let's look into the rule. So here we see that the form submit actually triggered. Um, the form ID was exactly what we needed, the event. And then we have the trigger was also deployed, which is the auto event trigger, which was correct. So this all worked. Now, just to do some quality checking, we go into Google Analytics and actually look into our real-time reporting. And in the real-time reporting, we also have the event tab. And we saw that just some seconds ago, something was triggered, it is the form submit, and it has the right values of action and label. So this all worked. And this is basically also the step of deploying auto event tracking for click and the other events. Obviously, if we spin this to the end, you would go to Google Tag Manager and publish this version. So it will be actually live on all the pages, which is now the case. So these are basically the steps to do this for the click, the link click listener, the history and the error listener too. Um, I would encourage you to just try this out and maybe let me know in the comments um, if you have any problems. Auto event listeners can be tricky. So just a word of warning here, not always do these auto event listeners work because it doesn't really propagate through the DOM and this can be 
due to how the site is programmed and you need to debug your JavaScript when this doesn't work. But these are the new steps of how to deploy auto event tracking within the new version of Google Tag Manager. To our today's topic, macros. So what are macros exactly? Well, you might heard of macros before from the little program called Excel, where you can put in these little scripts and it will automize a lot of things for you. This is basically the same in Google Tag Manager. So recently, the Google Tag Manager team has announced a new version of Google Tag Manager, which is currently in beta. And this really features a new interface, which we will look at in a second. We also have the change that two of the major components of Google Tag Manager were renamed. That would be, for one, the rules.